now there's something about having um, beauty pageant representatives, both the guys and the girls. There's something about them. When they arrive, you know, they're all poised. Mm -hmm. You know, they walk a certain way. They have this confidence. And we just kind of assume that you know, that's how they are. But did you know that there are some brains behind all that poise? There's some training behind all that structure and all mm -hmm. those great looks. And people like who we have on the couch today are the reason why they look so good. Yes, his name is Toby Olamide Alabi, popularly known as TCC. He's the founder of TCC Organization. So guys, listen, right? A two-time Miss World, mm -hmm. three-time Miss Supranatural National, mm -hmm. <laughs> two time Miss Echo Nigeria and current Miss Echo International first runner up. He has also been recognized internationally and has gained so many awards. You are welcome Toby. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now if you are just sitting in the reception somewhere and someone passed by, they wouldn't know the job you do. <laughs> At all. They wouldn't know. And the funny part about it is that I don't have to say much because mm. once my girls pass through, mm. my job is done. Mm. You know, the accolades just keep coming in. People go like, wow. And I'm sitting right there and I'm like, mm, I say wow too. <laughs> <laughs> you need to tell us how, yes, how this all started. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I started out as a model. Um, I modeled for about three years prior to being a coach. And I, f I remember the first time I went for my modeling casting, the ever first one I did, I wasn't selected, honestly. They told me I was not tall enough. Wow. I know we hear this all that the time. to me before. Yeah. I know, right? Models really? tell you all the time and then you think it's a myth, but it's not. Mm. They actually say to us that we are not tall enough. And I wasn't upset. I remember taking the broom and I'm like, if I'm not going to walk the show, I'm going to clean at the show. I just want to be at the show. Oh, wow. And it was, I was really determined to be at the show. I was at the show. Mm. The next year, same thing. And for the third time, after going twice, mm. I was selected. Wow. And I was the one who opened the runway. So I opened the show and then everybody went like, what? Mm. That energy, that presence. Mm. We didn't know you were a complete package. Mm. And then I realized there's so many people who are very good, mm. but are not given an opportunity to show how good they are mm. simply because the first appearance, which is the physical appearance, yeah. is not what the judges are looking for. Mm -hmm. okay. So I decided to stand in the gap for those people and start oh. training them and start bringing out the best in them and let people see that there is more than meets the eyes. Mm. And that's how we got here. Okay, now let's talk about um, your experience so far yeah. doing this. And we know that we live in a, in a climb where um, you're a man and you're effeminate. People give you that stare. Like, mm. Mm. Tell looks. us how you manage that. Okay, so um, when I started, honestly, it is... First of all, let me just give a big shout out to my family because... It takes a strong family mm. to appreciate what you do when it's not the norm. Mm. And we are in Nigeria where stereotypes and conversations can rise up anytime. Exactly. And next thing, your name is blowing out of mm. proportion. Mm. But um, when I started, I, I reminded myself that you're, you're doing this thing for a particular group of people. Okay. There's a reason you know, to why you're doing this. Let your reason be known. You know how when we're going to school, they say, remember the son of who you are? Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So there was a reason for this. It was to change the narrative. It was to break the walls. It was to break the bias. Mm. I was not concerned about what anybody was going to say. Of course, I'm human. Once in a while, it would get to, you. Get to me. But I kept reminding myself that you need to stand in the gap. And standing in the gap is a lot of work. Mm. You yeah. cannot be in the gap and not be talked about. So you have to decide, do you want to be talked about? Or do you just want to be there? Mm. And I don't want to be basic. I'm not mediocre. I mean, come on. This is 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to... I'm so sorry. I, I, I need to jump in because yes. we just saw, saw you with some amazing beauty queens. Mm -hmm. And they all really appreciate you for what you do. Done. Mm -hmm. But for those that have probably not seen you do what you do, mm -hmm. what is that process? How do you take them from start to finish during the camp for these pageants? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Um, when I started, it was just come get trained, go for your pageant. I wish you all the best. Okay. But my brand um, evolved into not just training you, but changing your entire mindset as a person. Okay. I want you to stand in front of the world and be brave enough to say, I can do this. I'm enough. Okay. You know, my mantra has always been, I'm good enough. I, I'm enough. I can do this. I have great potentials. So I instilled in them all the qualities I told myself. 
Like the Bible says, see it, our man diligent in his doing, he'll stand before mm -hmm. kings and not before men. Yeah. So I keep telling my girls, I'm like, mm -hmm. if you are diligent, if you're determined, if you know what you want, you will stand in the highest of heights. Mm -hmm. And what's the highest of heights in pageantry is winning the crown, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that pushed me to keep being the best, to give them the best. Mm -hmm. I study, I take courses, I have my lineup of activities that makes me the person who I am today. And I'm grateful for the fact that I can teach. You know, it's not everyone who can but teach. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. today, being a two times Miss World and a mm. three times Miss Supranational coach, honestly, that is yeah, that is surreal. Yeah. <laughs> it's profound. It is. Um, you're, I mean, I can see the determination, mm. you know, in the work that you do, and it, you know, it tells in how you're, you know, talking about it and how you're selling your brand, and talking about yourself and your journey. Now, let's talk about some of the mentors. I mean, you have gone through the process, you have studied, you have done the rigorous works, you have sometimes even gotten your hands dirty. Let's talk about some of the people that you have looked up to mm. in this journey that even give you the courage, mm. you know, to keep going. So I'm, I'm not going to kid you. I know we hear this all the time. Oh, my mom is my superpower. My dad is my, you know, we yeah. hear that. Yeah. But to be honest, one person who has kept me going as I as God, because I mean, God is the ultimate. Yeah has been my sister. Okay. Um, my entire family, like I said, they are amazing. But my elder sister, she lived her life, or she is living her life in a way that is very exemplary to every one of us around her. Mm -hmm. And she has given us the opportunity to want to be more. more. Mm -hmm. She has given us the opportunity to be content, mm -hmm. but also still reach for more. Mm -hmm. And that is a beautiful thing. And I'm, I can't say how grateful I am because there's certain things you cannot pay for but family, friends, and the fans have given me the energy I have today to get to, to be where I am. But above everything else, I cannot sit here and not mention the fact that our very own Winfrey Aww. is a mentor. I, for every day I have the opportunity to tell her, I tell her, I remind her that just looking at you, you showed me that I could be what ever Aww. I need it to be. Oh, that's and I scary. hope she's hearing. Yeah, she'll probably we free, this is for you wherever you are out there. <laughs> Just know that we love you. All right. Uh, uh, funny stories now. Funny mm -hmm. stories. Let's I know go. that there are some models you've met that you're like, uh-uh. Uh -uh. This uh -uh. one is uh -uh. uh -uh. uh -uh. non-teachable. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's any model that you're like, yeah, yeah um, that no, can never be to work. Though. I'm done. <laughs> okay. It's funny how I also had that same question. <laughs> I also had that same thought because <laughs> it, happens. it happens. I know. So um, to be honest, I, I'm not on TV to make everybody, anybody feel good about themselves yeah. right now. It's about me. It, it has happened. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've, I've gone to auditions where I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes I just, I'm like, me day, hold it. Hold it. Don't, don't hold say it. it. Don't say I'm it. Like, Can I use the washroom, please? And, yeah. I'm, and I'm like... I bust into laughter. Okay. But you know what? That is the challenge I like. Okay. Mm. Same Bible said, many are called. Yeah. Few yeah. are chosen. chosen. <laughs> so that few that people would not go for, yeah. I would I go for them. Okay. Because those are the ones that when their lives change, mm. the world can relate to them. Mm. They come from nothing. Most times yeah. they come from something. Yeah. But at the end of the day, essence is the fact that you can bring out the beauty mm. and you can now be a force for good mm. and aside being a force for good is living with a beauty that has a purpose that's the most amazing part of it let's talk about um the future of pageantry yes. mm. in nigeria okay i mean you are here doing your thing i'm sure you also have mentees people who look up to you who want to be like you um, so we'll, we'll talk about that, but most of, let's talk about the future of pageantry. Where do you see it in the next five to ten years? Hmm. So let's, let's go back. Let me go back three years ago, before I go to five years from now. Okay. Three years ago, I made some, let me say declarations, because, you know, <laughs> we have to be prophetic. Yes, so, <laughs> very important. <laughs> so I made some declarations, and I said it. I said this and this and this will happen in the pageant industry. Okay. And it was a talk of war, because they didn't want it. They... They were fighting it. But I knew what I was saying because it was ordained. It's orchestrated to happen that way. Mm. And today they're happening. Mm. And I'm excited they're happening. Mm. Five years from now, I know pageantry in Nigeria is going to be a sport that even the government will want to support it. Mm. We have girls representing Nigeria these days. They are so good. Mm -hmm. 
fabulous, they are beautiful, they are brilliant. They are literally everything a black woman should be. Should be. They represent, they stand for. And I'm so proud of each and every girl out there, not just the ones I've trained, but for every pageant girl who has left the four walls of Nigeria to represent us out there. Yeah. Honestly, just take your flowers because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. There's a nation, it's a giant of Africa. Mm -hmm. You are one person. Yeah. It's all on your shoulders to make sure you put us in a good light. Mm -hmm. And whatever you do out there registers. Mm -hmm. So that's beautiful. So in five years' time, I'm hoping that we can have more structure, anyways. So structures, programs, let these things run. Let these girls not have to spend money to compete mm -hmm. so that they are not worn out by the time they are going international. Mm -hmm. Let these girls have sponsors that are not willing, that are willing to do the work and not willing because they feel like these girls are at their beck and call. Mm -hmm. Let's have people that are supporting financially, mentally, spiritually, physically. That is what I hope for in the next five years. And there's, there's, I had a conversation with someone yes. yesterday and there are times, I mean, over the years we've seen beauty queens and sometimes we ask ourselves, um, what is the criteria for <laughs> oh, this person? Did Did you, really you want to throw that? me under the box. <laughs> <laughs> You want to throw me but under the bus? Trust me, I'm not the one thinking this way. I get into these conversations all the time. With who? And he asks, and I'm like, what? Oh, please, how did this person become? Who have you been with? conversing <laughs> with? <laughs> okay, but let's talk about the actual things you look out for. Okay. Yes. Bring an audition. Yeah. What are you Ooh, doing? Specifically? Yummy. What makes the queen the queen? What are the things that she needs to do to get the crown? <laughs> Funniest thing you do for me, you don't need to do anything. Wow. Once I see you, walk into that room, mm. I know exactly what I want That means you see potential. You. I see potential. Mm -hmm. See, I say, all the, Miss, the owner of Miss World, the CEO of Miss World, she says all the time, beauty, she has seen beautiful women. Mm. Beauty does not freak her anymore. Wow. I've seen beautiful women. Wow. Beauty does not freak me anymore. I've so seen... what's next? What's next? <laughs> what else? What's what else? What can you bring? Is... Exactly. What's behind those amazing legs? It's your heart. Yeah. Oh. And that's why my favorite beauty queen would forever be Miss Equal International, first yeah. runner-up, because she's stunning. Then, of course, our beautiful Miss Okay, Wall. that's um, and Nena Odum. Nena Odum. Oh, she yeah. was on the show sometime yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We could continue this conversation for the next could. one hour, but we are almost out of time. <laughs> we have Chef. Ara in the kitchen with Mike, and there's an amazing meal cooking. Can you smell the aroma? Yes.